In the words of the legendary chef and my personal hero, Anthony Bourdain, food is everything we are. It's an extension of a nationalist feeling, ethnic feeling, your personal history, your province, your region, your tribe, your grandma. It's inseparable from those from the get-go. Welcome to Every Dish, A Story, a podcast about a place of food in our lives and what it meant to our ancestors. I'm your host, Kat, and I'm going to take you to a new location every two weeks to connect to who we are. Momofuku Ando, the genius behind the invention of instant noodles, amongst other things, once said that peace will come to the world when people have enough noodles to eat. Welcome to Every Dish, A Story, episode 23. I'm your host, Kat. Let's take a trip to Japan. Noodles are a staple snack in many countries, and in some, they are considered a complete meal. Noodles have in some ways become a necessity for people. We've been eating noodles since ancient times, but the variety available today is astounding. Not only that, but there's over a thousand different flavors that make each noodle special and unique in its own way. Noodles are especially important in East Asia, and people from all over the world travel to East Asia just to sample the delicious noodles. And udon noodles is one of the varieties. And this is the noodles that we're going to be talking about today. Udon noodles are made from a dough that is made by combining two types of wheat flour, soft wheat flour and semi-hard wheat flour, as well as adding some salts. Most of the salt that is added to the dough is lost during the cooking process. Noodles are usually boiled and served in an udon bowl with soup broth, which is called udon tsuyu in Japanese, and the type of dish itself is called kake udon. The broth in Western Japan is typically made with konbu, which is a type of kelp, and cooked dried fish, and then is seasoned with a light-colored soy sauce. In Eastern Japan, however, the broth is mostly made from konbu and dried bonito, which is a type of fish, and then seasoned with a dark-colored soy sauce. There are some strict rules in place when it comes to producing the noodles. According to Japanese agricultural standards, the quality labeling standard for instant noodles, if a machine was used in the production process, the well-kneaded dough prepared by mixing wheat flour with salt and water, then cut into long and thin ribbon, and then dried, the resulting noodles are classified as kikaimen, which is basically literally means machine-made noodles. Furthermore, the molded noodles with a diameter of 1.7 millimeters or larger are classified as udon noodles. Meanwhile, the noodles with a diameter of 1.3 millimeters to less than 1.7 millimeters are known as hiyamugi and are also sold under the trade name of hoso udon. Tanobi udon, which are hand-drawn udon noodles, must adhere to the following standards. After adding starch, vegetable oil or flour, a well-kneaded dough made by mixing flour with salt and water is twisted and stretched before being dried and ripened. The mature dough is then formed into cylindrical or ribbon shape with a diameter of at least 1.7 mm. Tenobi udon must meet the specifications outlined in the Japanese agricultural standards for hand strange dried noodles. As for fresh noodles, boiled and other types of noodles, including semi-dried noodles and frozen noodles, there are no standards in the production process. The Fair Competition Code for Fresh Noodle Labeling states that in this code, regardless of the trade names such as hiramen, which are thin noodles, hiamugi, which are udon noodles, somen, which are thin white noodles, udon noodles refers to any type of noodles, noodles made from well-mixed flour with water, or processed noodles. The hiamugi and somen codes classify as udon noodles, so in, basically it can be explained as only udon noodles that have the categories of fresh noodles and cooked noodles. However, the code also states in a separate paragraph that, quote-unquote, other trade names are applicable to prevent misidentification by consumers, which allows manufacturers to use trade names such as hiamugi and somen. That's pretty hardcore, isn't it? The opinions on the first appearance of udon noodles also differ, and the matter is still unresolved to this day. The Chinese-Japanese Dictionary of Hieroglyphics compiled during the Heian period referred to sakubei, which are Chinese sweets, as muginawa, one of the 14 types of kabei, which are sweets made from rice flour. Brought from China to Japan by Japanese envoys to Tang Dynasty during the Nara period. And it is thought that muginawa was the origin of Japanese noodles. Muginawa was made from a combination of rice flour and wheat flour. Zen priests who went to Song dynasty during the Kamakura period brought thin noodles made from wheat flour to Japan via Hakata, which became the source of Kirimugi, which are wheat noodles. There's also a description in the basic encyclopedia written by Kanera Ichio during the Muramachi period, quote-unquote, somen is boiled with hot steam while Kirimugi is washed in cold water. 
and this strongly supports the theory that kirimugi is the predecessor of udon noodles. There's also the theory that udon noodles originated from konton, a type of sweet dumpling brought from China by Tang Dynasty Japanese envoys during the Nara period. Furthermore, there's a legend that Kobo Daishi introduced Tang Dynasty udon noodles to Shikoku region, which later became Sanuki udon, udon noodles from Kagawa prefecture. After the Edo period, these noodles were referred to as udon, nurumugi, which refers to heated kirimugi, and hiyamugi, which refers to chilled kirimugi, were both referred to as udon. According to the book History of Udon Noodles by Masaru Aoki, the Chinese equivalent for wonton, which is Chinese dumpling that is very familiar to us, is spelled and pronounced as konton or unton, which is thought to be the source of udon. And according to Aya Akamura, udon noodles are the original Japanese noodles, descended from Chinese kirimugi, now hiyamugi. He also stated that the heated udon noodles with dip in broth have never been eaten by the Chinese. He went on to say that the term konton, which appeared in literature during the Heian period, referred to a flour bun filled with ground meat, rather than udon noodles. According to him, udon noodles first appeared in literature during the northern and southern course period in Japan under the name utong. In Japan, the most basic form of udon noodles is a hot soup called kake udon, with a broth called kake jiro, consisting mostly of soy sauce and mirin. Thinly sliced shallots often accompany the traditional noodles. People in different parts of Japan, however, prefer different toppings, such as mixed tempura fritters, bags of sweet tofu, sliced fish cakes, and so on and so forth. In the east, a dark soy sauce called kikuchi is added to the broth, whereas in the west, a light sauce called usukuchi is preferred. However, there are numerous varieties of udon on the market, such as yaki udon, curried udon, and so on. Udon noodles are cooked by immersing them in hot water. Because there are various types of noodles on the market, the portions of each vary. Udon noodles, for example, are served cold in the summer and hot in the winter. It's delicious in both cases. Hot udon noodles are referred to as nurumugi, while cold noodles are referred to as hiyamugi, as we already learned earlier. Hiyamugi is also called a udon salad that is usually mixed with scrambled eggs or chicken, but it can also be mixed with vegetables such as cucumbers and radishes for vegetarians. Some people mistakenly believe that udon is a western Japanese dish, while soba, the buckwheat noodles, is an eastern Japanese dish. In fact, many areas in eastern Japan are known for producing udon noodles. A sunaba store opened in Osaka in 1584, resulting in the development of suda culture in western Japan. According to some theories, the Edo period saw the spread of the soba culture from western Japan to the east. During the Edo period, udon noodles were popular among the common people in Edo city, which is today's Tokyo. Because soba noodles had not yet become popular, soba was usually consumed as soba dumplings during the early Edo period. Chopped leeks and onions are a common udon noodle topping. The type of leek grown in the region influences how the onions are used as a seasoning. White onions are preferred in the Kanto region, while long green onions, wakegi, and other vegetables are preferred in the Kinki region. While black pepper was used as a seasoning for udon noodles until the middle of Edo period, red pepper, which is usually cayenne powder, and shichimi tagarashi, which is a mixture of red cayenne pepper and other aromatic spices, has become the most popular seasoning today. Chopped green onions and grated ginger are also commonly used. The broth of udon noodle soup differs slightly between the Kanto and Kinki regions. The color of the broth varies depending on the type of soy sauce used. The broth in the Kanto region is invariably made with a basic sauce called kayesi, which is made from heating dark colored soy sauce with mirin, which is a sweet rice wine, and sugar. In the Kanto region, soup broth is made by diluting this kayeshi sauce with the broth made primarily of konbu and dried bonito. All but central Tokyo's traditional udon noodles use a soup broth of cooked dry fish and dry shiitake mushrooms seasoned with soy sauce or miso. The broth has a rich and glossy color. Let's look at the most popular varieties of udon that is served in Japan and all over the world. As I said before, the most traditional ways to serve udon noodles is called kake udon. Kake jiro is a very simple broth made from mirin, soy sauce and dashi. This dish is typically served with chopped green onions, grated ginger, chili flakes or a sashimi spice blend if desired. 
It can be upgraded by adding tempura, meat, vegetables, and other ingredients. To make yaki udon, in a hot wok, stir-fry udon noodles with chopped meat or vegetables to make this delicious summer dish. Carrots, cabbage, shrimp, and pork are all popular choices. The noodles are drizzled with barbecue sauce before being seasoned with yaki udon, pickled ginger, and bonito flakes. Tanuki udon is Kyoto's traditional udon soup and is named after an animal. Tanuki is a Japanese word that means raccoon dog. This dish consists of thick udon noodles and a thick broth seasoned with ground ginger and green onions. It is also topped with leftover fried tempura, which adds a nice crunch to the soup. Stamina udon is made with meat like pork, shrimp or chicken, as well as vegetables such as carrots, cabbage and green onions. It is topped with tsuya sauce and can be garnished with a fish cake or a raw egg. Kitsune udon is a noodle soup with dashi broth and is especially tasty when topped with fried tofu. Kitsune is a Japanese word for fox, and maybe it's because aburage, which is a deep-fried bag of tofu, is a fox's favorite food. Depending on the season, kitsune udon can be served either hot or cold. It's made with thick udon noodles, clear dashi broth, and soy sauce, mirin, and sugar. And finally, there is tempura udon. Thick udon noodles are served in a hot soup with crispy tempura pieces on top. The broth is simple and flavorful, with a rich umami flavor thanks to the dashi, soy sauce and mirin. You can add fish, shallots and sashimi seasoning for even more flavor. Before we finish up with the udon noodles, let's see how it is served around the world. According to the Cantonese reading, udon noodles are pronounced udon min in Hong Kong. This spelling was first used in Japanese restaurants in Hong Kong and it is now occasionally seen on the Chinese mainland as well. In Taiwan, udon noodles are known as urun tan min. In theory, udon noodles in Hong Kong and Taiwan are identical to Japanese noodles, though the soup broth is slightly altered to suit local tastes. Koreans are usually well known for their ramen noodles. Korea, in fact, is the birthplace of numerous types of noodles, and udon is one of the noodles available. As a result of Japanese rule in the first half of the 20th century, Japanese-style udon noodles, known as udong with the G at the end, are still a popular dish in the Republic of Korea today. And Korea has its own version of udon noodle soup. Unlike the Japanese pronunciation, udon is called udong in Korean, which usually refers to the noodle soup as a dish, not as a noodle. These greens and fish cake known as amuk are common ingredients in udon noodle soup in Korea. And while it's very similar to Japanese udon, the flavors are vastly different. Kaolu, a dish made with thick wheat noodles, is popular in Hoi An, Vietnam. According to one account, the noodles originated in Isi Udon and were brought there by the Isi merchants engaged in trade on merchant ships licensed by the shogunate in the first half of the 17th century. Saimin is a noodle dish popular in Hawaii, where many Japanese migrated during the Meiji period prior to the beginning of the Shua period. Saimin is now made with Chinese noodles, but the broth is decidedly Japanese in flavor. This suggests that the Saimin noodle dish evolved and was influenced by the exchange of immigrants from each country, with a focus on the Japanese. Udon, a noodle dish, is also found in Palau, which was under Japan's compulsory rule during the pre-war period. The broth for the soup, like udon noodles in Japan, is seasoned with soy sauce. However, this dish is distinguished by a lack of broth, which may be influenced by the Okinawan soba, because Palau has previously hosted many Okinawan immigrants, and by the use of the spaghetti, which is widely available in the country. Because of the popularity of Japanese cuisine in Europe and the United States, supermarkets and other stores have begun selling udon noodles in addition to the Japanese restaurants that serve udon noodles dishes as well. As a result, udon noodles are quickly becoming a well-known home-cooked dish. The way udon is eaten varies depending on how it is served. If udon is served with dipping sauce, dip a few strands of noodles in it before eating. Udon and soup or sauce is eaten by bringing the noodles to your mouth with chopsticks and making a slurping sound. Slurping enhances the flavor of the noodles and helps to cool them before they enter the mouth. If broth is present, it is consumed directly from the bowl, eliminating the need for spoon. At the end of the meal, it is not considered impolite to leave some uncooked soup in a bowl. On my YouTube channel, you will find a very simple but very hearty and very, very, very tasty dish, which is teriyaki udon with beef and broccoli. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description of this episode. And before we finish, I want to talk about the teriyaki sauce and where it comes from. 
teriyaki sauce today is a popular addition to any dish, whether it's fish, chicken or beef, or in many cases even your potato fries. The term teriyaki refers to a cooking method that combines the words teri to shine and yaki to grill or fry. This cooking method has been around since the Edo period. Many changes in urbanization and agricultural methods led to new ingredients and cooking styles during the Tokugawa Shogun dynasty, which reigned from 1603 to 1867. While shoyu is the primary flavor and used in authentic Japanese cooking, teriyaki first gained popularity in the United States in the 1960s, when Japanese immigrants settled in Hawaii. This one-of-a-kind marinade was made with local ingredients like pineapple juice and brown sugar mixed in soy sauce. Teriyaki sauce is traditionally made by combining and heating three ingredients – sugar, soy sauce, and sake, or mirin. Mirin is Japanese rice wine that is similar to sake, but has more sugar and a lower alcohol content of 14%. However, there are many teriyaki sauce variations that include garlic, ginger, cornstarch, honey, vinegar, and red pepper flakes. Teriyaki sauce appeals to many people due to its simplicity and ability to make food look more appetizing. The teriyaki sauce has a glossy, shiny finish, thanks to the mirin or sake, and also caramelized sugar. A popular cooking method is to marinate meat and vegetables in teriyaki sauce for 24 hours before cooking the meat. Teriyaki dishes are typically served with steamed rice or white noodles, which is eaten with the excess sauce. Teriyaki sauce is not only popular in the United States, but it has also grown in popularity in Japan in recent decades as well. Fast food restaurants now serve teriyaki burgers, steaks and meatballs with teriyaki sauce, as well as similar sauces which are popular with both children and adults. There's an Asian dish that has become a regional fast food joint in the Seattle area may be more American than you think, and that's Japanese teriyaki chicken. Japanese teriyaki restaurants became a fast food sensation in Seattle in the early 1970s, quickly becoming a well-known and beloved dish among locals. And that's thanks to Toshi Kasahara, a Japanese immigrant who opened the first teriyaki restaurant in Seattle. His fast casual style and deliciously sweet fried chicken became an instant hit, and many teriyaki restaurants sprang up in the aftermath of Toshi's success. In fact, at one point there were 83 teriyaki restaurants in Seattle alone. So to sum up, while teriyaki has Japanese origins and is a traditional method of cooking meat, the classic teriyaki dish and sauce we know and consume today has Japanese-American origins. It is a byproduct of colonization, immigration and cultural exchange in the United States. And it's on this note that we're going to leave Japan and I invite you to check out my recipe for teriyaki udon noodles with beef and broccoli on my YouTube channel. Continue to eat well, train hard, love cats, and also please recycle your garbage where you can. And of course, wherever you are in the world today, I hope that you are healthy and that you are safe. Bye-bye for now, and I'll be back on August 18th with our final episode for Season 2.